Right, so when I when I proposed this talk, I was really hoping that there would be some interest in the community as we as we talked on the mailing list, and unfortunately, that really hasn't materialized. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about you know what we're driving at towards the core, and you know let people get get some information about um, you, you know if they if their companies are planning a Type Two device, but they just can't talk about it or whatever. Uh, you know, we can we can hope to have a more seamless, you know, merge into the main core. Um, as as maintainers, uh, Dan and I have talked about this a lot, um, and so you know, we're looking for number one, general interest. Is anybody in the community looking at Type One or Type Two devices? Um, basically, accelerator devices, as as the title of the talk was, you know, beyond memory. Um, so. And uh, so go, go ahead and flip to the next page and then we'll, we'll go through type one and two current work. And then since I'm also presenting a little bit of DCD, I thought I'd just give a little bit of time back to DCD because that seems to need a lot more discussion. There's a lot more going on in the community there, a lot more moving parts and uh, participants. So, you know, for those who don't know, type one has direct access to main memory with dot cache and type two has both direct access. And so we're really targeting in the core type two, which will cover effectively both of these protocols and allowing accelerators to leverage core support within the core drivers that, you know, drivers CXL and, and that code. So we can kind of ignore type one unless somebody has a, a specific need for that. But we, we you know, those those are going to be mainly uh, driven by the the drivers and the and the accelerator itself. So I guess flip to the next slide. So now we're going to get into really the the point. So uh, for those of you who who may be interested in Type Two, you might have known that Dan already posted some RFC work. Some work for type two devices has actually landed there's there's um some splitting of data structures that's in the the upstream kernel that will allow it allow the core to better support accelerators and their um dot mem usage to be able to create regions um but but that was only the patches that we really needed to you know, clean up the core as it stands today, because without a, a good use case, we haven't tried to upstream all of that work. Um, I uh, Dan threw a, a the series at me, and I've I've recently rebased it, and I plan to and post that. Uh, there is one fix that I think should actually land upstream um, relatively quickly, even though the uh, fix doesn't materialize without a test driver. I still think it's appropriate to get upstream to um, clarify some of that data structure splitting that was done and is, is, is currently upstream. Um, and we're, we're focusing on a number of things. Uh, number one is coordinating between any accelerator drivers in the core. So you know, what we're driving towards is what does the core need to do to make sure that any accelerator drivers leverage the, the core kernel code, um, creating regions, uh, managing address of space for those, uh, for those memories that accelerators are going to have. We don't want to see accelerators go off and try to re-implement what's currently in the CXL core. Um, we also want to provide facilities to, you know, check and enumerate the link capabilities and allow drivers to focus on driving their hardware, not trying to manage uh, walking the CXL trees or switches and links and doing, you know, that type of work. We want that to be in the core, so the, the patch set covers that type of, of, of support. Um, and, and then any user space interactions that may, may need to be done. I, I'm still a little bit on the fence on this one because uh, right now the, the patch set is targeting uh, accelerator drivers to create regions. Um, I, I feel like, and, and of course this is totally up in the air, but I feel like there might be a use case for accelerator drivers to leverage the current region uh, DAX control device support, but I think that's all 
going to only materialize once we actually have a device and, and we know what the use cases for those devices are. So uh, that's just a gut feeling on my part at this point. And then, of course, um, as I'll mention in the DCD talk as well, uh, you know, anything that goes upstream, um, Dan and I have talked about this, and, and Dan is a very big believer in CXL tests, for those of you who don't know. Uh, but uh, I've kind of converted with my work on DCD, I've really converted over to uh, uh, really liking CXL test. And we feel that any, um, any features that go upstream need to have some sort of CXL test or, or, a, good, or a good reason that, say, Quimu needs to be used to test it instead um, or in addition. So, um, Moving on to Quimu support. I did throw a, a very quick uh, accelerator device out onto the mailing list a few months back, and it was relatively easy to derive a, a dummy accelerator device from a dot memory de uh, device. The, those devices are already available, um, obviously. And the idea there was really just to emulate the, the type of support in the hardware that the core was going to check such that the core code could be tested. Um, at this point, we probably could do with that with CXL test. So I really don't know how far we should really go with Quimu um, or not. Uh, you know, you know it, it's really kind of a what's best. Uh, you know, with some work, um, you know, I, I implemented testing for event processing in both CXL test and Quimu. And you know, Quimu offered a lot of interesting test cases, um, but strictly speaking, it's not. It wasn't required. So I'm leaning towards that with Quimu, but uh, you know, or, or I'm leaning towards that with Type Two support. Is that potentially Quimu support may not be needed just to get the testing in the core that we need for the core, um, because most of the testing, quote unquote, for accelerators will really be based on the devices that are being developed. So, you know, that's that's a place where Quimu support would be more advantageous. And I think that's up to the device vendors who are building these devices and what, what they'll need. So I don't really see Quimu support going too much further than what I've hacked together. I have a question. So at OCP, I saw um, Intel Type two kernel, same page merging, right? I, have you seen this? Okay, Dan doesn't know about this. Okay, I, I forgot <laughs> the guy's name. I don't know, Ira, have you heard about this? No, I have not. Okay, there's someone at Intel working on for the FPGAs, right? Uh, and, and so, yeah, they... It's not? It's not? What is the it's the same, same page merging? What is it called? What is the kernel same page merging? K7, yeah, yeah, they offloaded it to the FPGA. So anyway, mm, okay. just a heads up, so you might want to find out who that is and what they're working on. Right. But yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, yeah, the, the F, FPGA people, not trying to be rude, but, but in terms of like open, open market upstream drivers, I, I feel like FPGAs are kind of more prototyping, uh, prototyping or, or, not, or not even prototyping, but like, like custom drivers, people kind of build their, build their thing out in the field. I field programmable to get it raised. I talked I, I talk to this right. person, and he did say that he was leveraging the Type 2 support on the kernel now, though. Okay. Right? Like, so it was like an, a, a, an example of someone actually using it for hardware. But, but was, he, was he leveraging what Dan posted, or what's act because what's upstream is very minimal. So it might have just been what Dan posted originally. The, 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 the summary is, for everybody in the room, like. Uh, first mover advantage is open. If you want to come to the community yeah. with, with your accelerator driver, you get to define how this integrates to the CXL core. Until then, we just have like pretend patches that are guessing. And and you know what? That sums up my talk really well. So, <laughs> are there any other comments? Uh, I just have a. Oh. So I have a question about um, so figuring out use cases specific to like type one that, or, you know, uh, that wouldn't require type three. So one of them I think is probably RAS handling. So we might be talking about that later. 
but you know, CXL.cache technically you can handle RAS events through the, the RAS capability structure without re requiring all the mem infrastructure, right? I'm not talking about through the mailbox. So right now, the current infrastructure, I think, we rely on all the memory, uh, you know, parts of it. So is there any plans or thoughts to at least bring that piece out into the core so that any CXL entity could leverage it? So this also kind of aligned with the work that Jonathan started. I, 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 think, I think Jonathan's patches to m refactor the CCI stuff out of the core is going, there's other people that are going, so the word MMPT was mentioned, you talk about RAS, I know OCP has this RAS API thing, so I think it's going to be people that want to all use this core, and so it needs to co become a library. To, to so. that, you know, look, looking at the current patch set, I think that more separation might be warranted because I think like this one fix that I'm looking at that's upstream, but only really breaks when you have an accelerator device, which is our test device. I, I feel like the, the split needs to be like done now so that we're, we're a little bit cleaner in the core, but it, it's not strictly necessary because nobody's using that code path. So. So yeah, I, I see where you're going. So I mean, you, you brought up, I think you brought up, you meant, uh, was it MCTP or? M M MMTP, M and something, something. Like, it was M and then it was a T or the T. Okay. I see. And is that, that's in band still? Yeah. And that's covering the CXL RAS capability or is it built on top of it? Um, it's more closely related to the mailbox. Well, so I guess this is what I'm trying to drive at. So if we're we're focusing on on the mailbox and what's in the devices or the you know the switches or whatever, but we're still neglecting the the CXL RAS capability that's not part of the mailbox. So things that capture the protocol errors. So I think that is still important, probably more so for the the hardware vendors and for the host you know, developers. Um, and there's a lot of people that still want to do that stuff in band and OS first. You know, we could say firmware ways to do it, but a lot of folks don't always want to do that. I'll let, I'll let move on, but the, uh, take a look at the work that AMD landed recently that was plumbing a lot of the protocol error support uh, with, with, with some core support. Um, right now it is tied to that memory device, but I think, it, yeah, I think it's, it's that gives a pathway to support, directly supporting it other places. Yeah, I don't, I'm going to actually defer the rest of my time to DCD so we can get started on that. This is, this is basically what we have. And I'd rather spend the time talking about that because it seems like we have a lot uh, more, a lot I, more interest in that. I, I just had a, a comment regarding the, the type two stuff. Um, would it make sense to try to, to push more um, for, for back and validation, um, considering that it, it, it's for type two and type three? Yes, I think so. But again, I think we're gonna need some use case for it. Yeah, what, what I would love to have is somebody saying that they're going to uh, put back and validate in a generic type three device because right now we have this call called CXL CPU cache and validate, which is terrible. Um, and it, it uses the right back and validate instruction that everybody hates. Um, I would love if any kind of type three side operation that invalidates, like I could just, if I, if I change the decoder, I can hit a button on, on, the, on the decoder and, and it's used back and validate. So that, that, that's my wish list item. Um, so I, I, I hope that would be the path to get HDMDB into the kernel is, is to piggyback on what type three needs for it. That's in the category of watch this space. So Jonathan, we're gonna have you kick this off.